let's have a look at electrolyte imbalances and its nursing care before going to the details you should know what is electrolyte and what is its importance they are various chemicals or minerals which can carry positive or negative electrical charges in body fluids and cells why electrolytes are important it plays a number of roles which helps to maintain electrical neutrality in cells generate and conduct action potentials in nerves and muscles six important electrolytes are sodium potassium chloride magnesium bicarbonate and phosphate nearly every fluids and cells contain electrolytes which helps to balance blood ph levels which facilitate waste excretion from cells maintains fluid balances and promote proper functioning of nerves muscles heart and brain cells electrolytes helps to transport nutrients into cells electrolyte imbalance is present whenever there is an excess or deficit in plasma levels of a specific ion term used to describe imbalance contain the prefix hyper or hypo hyper for increased and hypo for decreased followed by name of the electrolyte in its latin form for example hyponatremia low plasma sodium hyperkalemia is elevated plasma potassium let's see what are the etiology and risk factors of electrolyte imbalances Electrolyte deficit may caused by decreased intake of electrolytes or decreased availability or it may be caused by increased loss for example the loss of gastric juice through vomiting may lead to the loss of several electrolytes electrolyte excess can be caused by increased intake or increased retention of electrolytes or in case decreased ability to excrete certain electrolyte these reason may cause electrolyte excess for example ingestion of excess sodium bicarbonate for indigestion can alter both sodium levels and acid base balances let's learn pathophysiology any alteration in conduction of electrical current across a cell membrane for example any alteration in electrolyte concentration ion concentration cell membrane permeability will result in cell membrane firing that means the cell got abnormal signal as a result of that the cells that normally do not generate any action potential begin to do so hypokalemia and hyperkalemia both are electrolyte imbalances these electrolyte imbalances causes the cell membrane firing how hypokalemia means low potassium level low potassium level means what positive charges decreases as a result of that negative charge increases that is negative charge increases means the cells are hyperpolarized these hyperpolarized cells needs stronger stimulus to depolarize the cell membrane and thereby generate an action potential on the other hand hyperkalemia means hyper uh, positive charge potassium is having positive charge so as a result of hyperkalemia the cell membrane becomes more positive and that is the cells are hypopolarized this hypopolarized cells needs a weaker stimulus even with a weaker stimulus the cells ge generate action potential so as a result of hyperkalemia what will happen abnormal heart rhythms in case of brain injury it will results in seizures in the same way diagnosis of electrolyte imbalances can be made through clinical assessment and measurement of plasma levels of electrolytes and it can be expressed as milli equivalents per liter or milligram per deciliter 
Let's see nursing management of medical client. First is assessment. Take a complete history of risk factors and presenting manifestations. Collect information on client diet and medications. Client and family members should be asked about behavioral changes, headaches, increased weakness or sleepiness, dizziness and palpitations. Compare client's height and weight to body mass index. Assess intake and output, peripheral vein filling time and vital signs every 4 to 8 hours. Assess plasma levels of electrolytes. Regarding nurse and diagnosis, risk for hyponatremia related to unreplaced loss or limited oral intake. Hyponatremia related to vomiting, diarrhea, gastric sectioning or burns. Impaired oral mucous membrane related to lack of body water secondary to hyponatremia. Hypokalemia related to vomiting, diarrhea or prolonged diuretic use. Hyperkalemia related to renal dysfunction, traumatic injuries. Let's see some nursing interventions. Reduce sodium loss in high risk clients. If plasma sodium levels are greater than 125 milliequivalents per liter, encourage 30 to 60 ml of clear liquids. In high risk clients, irrigate na nasogastric tube and wounds with isotonic saline. Encourage intake of well balanced diet. If client is receiving nutrition only through feeding, tube feeding, it is sometimes necessary to add extra salt to the feeding to achieve the desired sodium levels. In client with fluid restriction to decrease the thirst, offer ice chips, cold fluids and frequent oral care. In clients hypertonic saline therapy, give very slowly to decrease the risk of hyperatresia. If IV potassium is prescribed, ensure that it is diluted in IV fluids, cannot be given as IV push. In client with hypokalemia, instead client to take potassium supplements with glass or more of water to decrease gastrointestinal irritation. Administer fluids as ordered to promote renal excretion of potassium in hyperkalemia patients. Thanks for watching. Please do like, comment, share and subscribe for more videos on nursing.